This is a video showing the scaling process with the NR. In this video, we will discuss many of the different types of scaling when using two-point scaling with the NR. Here is an introduction to a waveform that will be used to compare the different methods. This sine wave will represent our unscaled waveform. For simplicity of the video, we are going to pull out the waveform graph and cursor information window. The cursor window will be used as a tool to compare the differences in measurement values for the data between cursors A and B in the waveform window. We are also going to be referring to the scaling settings for the NR. The scaling settings can be found in the channel detail settings by following the steps on the screen. Like with the other display, we are going to pull out the channel detail settings to simplify the appearance. The scaling is set by two acquired values, scaled to displayed values. The units of measure used for the acquired values are set by the input channel. The units of measure for the displayed values are set manually in the unit box. The displayed units can be selected by dropdown or typed in manually. The final settings window that will be used in this video is the display setting window. This window can be found most easily from the display setting button in the home tab. To simplify the screen, we will just focus on the display range. The upper and lower limits in this window determine the upper and lower limits of the waveform graph. This will be shown in the examples for each input type. The first type of scaling that can be performed with two-point scaling is shifting. Shifting allows you to calibrate your measurement up or down. If the linear equation model is helpful for you, you can see here where the shift fits in in the equation. Again, this is our unscaled waveform. You can see in the data on the cursor information window that the max value is about 8 and the min value is about negative 7.2. To perform a shift scale, we are only going to adjust the displayed values. We are going to increase each of these values by 1 to shift the data values in the waveform by 1 volt. Scaling points 1 and 2 are interchangeable. Their order does not affect the scaling process. Now in the graph, we can see the shift affect the data through an added animation. You can see that both the graph and the cursor information increased by 1 volt. The second type of scaling that can be performed is span scaling. Span scaling stretches the data out by some desired factor. To show the effect of span scaling on the waveform, we will set 0 to stay equal to 0 in the first point, but scale the rest of the data by a factor of 1.1 with the second point. This time in the graph, you will see the data stretch 1.1 times around 0 volts. The third type of scaling is one that is common if you have used a key ins measurement sensor for any analog applications, that is analog limit scaling. In analog limit scaling, you are mirroring the engineering units to analog range conversion that is performed on the sensor. When an upper limit and lower limit for the measurement range and analog signal are provided, this procedure will be the easiest to set your scaling. Somewhere within the plus or minus 10 volt range is common for analog voltage outputs and 4 to 20 milliamps is common for analog current outputs. To take a look at the process for analog limit scaling, let's take our unscaled waveform and use an example key and sensor, the LKG. This laser sensor can be set to have a measurement range from 0 to 50 millimeters with an analog voltage output of plus and minus 10 volts. We are going to use these values to set scaling point 1 to be negative 10 volts to equals 0 millimeters. Scaling point 2 will be positive 10 volts to equal 50 millimeters. Remember that scaling points 1 and 2 are in no particular order and can be switched with the same result. Note that in order to display the scaled values in millimeters, we will need to make sure that the unit box is correct. Let's see how this scaling affects the waveform. You can see in the cursor information window that the measurement values are adjusted to the new scale. This scaling uses both a shift and a span to move the waveform out of the display range. We need to adjust the display range to account for this. 
In the Display Settings window, we can change the setting to allow us to manually set the display range. Adjusting the display to match our limits of 0 to 50 mm can be helpful to see the full picture of the data that is collected in the waveform. Now as the display settings take effect, the waveform is brought back into view. Note that the display settings don't affect the data values. They are only a visual adjustment. The last type of scaling is called ratio metric or ratio scaling. This type of analog scaling is typically used for signals expected to have small vibrations around a zero point. Specifications for this type of scaling will either assume that both values will align at zero or ask to perform a calibration shift after measuring. To see this type of scaling performed on our unscaled waveform, we will use a current clamp as an example. As you can see, this style of current clamp has multiple different options for scaling based on the amperage range needed for the application. The currently selected option is the 10 mV per amp setting. For this setting, we will still set 0 volts equal to 0 amps in point 1. Being careful to notice that the channel input units are in volts, we will set point to be 1 hundredth of a volt is equal to 1 amp. This means the same thing as the sensitivity in millivolts. Let's see how this scaling affects the waveform. This scaling stretches the measurement values out 100 times about zero. Even though the values are cut off on the display, you can see that the max and min values in the cursor information window are still correct after this scaling. As with the analog limit scaling, let's correct for the display. Because we know that the waveform was scaled 100 times, we can also choose our display limits to be 100 times larger. That will make the scale visible with our newly scaled data points. That was the last of the common scaling types that can be performed with two-point scaling on the NR. There are other scenarios where scaling can be used to achieve desired outputs with sensors. For example, strain gauge load cells have their own scaling process. For more information on these processes, refer to the NR user's manual or reach out to your local KeyInst product specialist.